Hi, welcome to iEducator. This is Teacher Jeff. I'm an educator and an engineer by profession. And today, we will discuss another topic, and that will be transportation model. Now, in operations research, linear programming is one of the models in mathematical programming, which is very broad and vast. Mathematical programming includes various optimization models known as nonlinear programming, stochastic programming, integer programming, and dynamic programming. Each one of them is an efficient optimization technique to solve the problem with a specific structure, which depends on the assumptions made in formulating the model. Now, as you can recall, the general linear programming model is based on the following assumptions. It is based on the assumption of certainty, linearity, divisibility, single stage, non-negativity, fixed technology, and constant profit or cost per unit. Now, what do I mean by certainty? Now, in this case, Certainty means that resources available, the requirements of resources by competing candidates, and the profit coefficients of each variable are assumed to remain unchanged, and they are certain in nature. And when we see linearity, also, in the general linear programming model, is based on the linearity assumption. Here, the objective function and structural constraints are consumed or assumed rather to be linear. And the term linearity implies proportionality or additivity. And this assumption is very useful as it simplifies modeling of the problem. Next, we have divisibility. This means that all variables are assumed to be continuous. Therefore, they can assume integer or fractional values. This further means that companies can manufacture products in fractional units. For example, a company manufactures 2.5 vehicles, 3.2 barrels of oils, etc. So any fractional units. Another thing that is based on the assumption of single stage now, single stage means that only one decision is required for the planning period. And this is what makes linear programming model as a static model, which implies the linear programming problem is a single stage decision problem. Aside from that, Linear programming model is also based on non-negativity assumption. In non-negativity assumption, a non-negativity constraint exists in the problem so that the values of all variables are to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, this can be best understood well by means of an example. Now, for example, there are cases that the company decides to either stop the production of their products or may continue to produce any amount of their products. Now, this means that if the company decides to stop the production, then the quantity of products produced is technically equal to zero, right? On the other hand, if the company decides to manufacture any amount of their products, then the quantity of products produced will be basically greater than zero. And when we say fixed technology, this means that production requirements are assumed to be fixed during the planning period. And finally, constant profits or cost per unit this assumption means that the profit contribution of a product remains constant, irrespective of the level of production and sales. Now, moving on, we have transportation model. Now, what is meant by transportation model? When we say transportation model, this deals with a special class 
of linear programming problem in which the objective is to transport a homogeneous commodity from various origins or factories to different destinations or markets at a total minimum cost. Now, it is very clear that transportation model deals with logistics problem. The limitations, challenges, and the restrictions while a certain product undergoes while it is being transported from one place to another at a minimum cost and at a maximum profit. Now, this point, we have different terminologies that is or that are commonly used in the transportation problems or transportation model problems and these are the following first we have destination destination refers to a point of demand in transportation problem and when we say origin this is the source or supply location in transportation Aside from that, we have unused squares, and these refer to squares which represent routes where no quantity is shipped between a source and destination. And when we say stone squares, these are used squares in transportation problem. And lastly, we have opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the cost of the opportunities that are sacrificed in order to take action or in order to take certain courses of actions. And on another topic, we also have aim of transportation problem. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is the aim of transportation problem? Now, the only aim of transportation problem is to find out the optimum transportation schedule keeping in mind cost of transportation to be minimized. Now, the aim of transportation problem apparently gives us two ideas. Now, what are these two ideas? First is to find out the optimum transportation schedule. And second, the cost of transportation should be minimized. Now, at this point, let us find out first about finding out the optimum transportation schedule. Now, how are we supposed to do that? Now, in finding out the optimum transportation schedule, we need to consider two things. First is the origin of the transportation problem, which is the location from which shipments are dispatched. And second thing to consider is the destination of a transportation problem, which is the location to which shipments are transported. Now, this is all about the first idea provided by the aim of transportation problem. Now, moving on to the second idea. The second idea is concerned about how to minimize the cost of transportation. And so for this matter, there's only one thing that we need to consider, and that is the unit transportation cost, which is the cost of transporting one unit of the consignment from one origin to a destination. Moving on to a different topic, we have applications of transportation model. Now, in real life, where can we apply the transportation model? Now, this can be applied in the following, but are not limited to. First, it can be used to compute transportation routes in such a way as to minimize transportation costs for finding out locations of warehouses. That's our first application. Now, the second application is, it is used to find out locations of transportation corporation depots where insignificant total cost difference may not matter. And third application, we have minimized shipping costs. It may be shipping costs from factories to warehouses or from warehouses to retail outlets. And number four application, we have determined low cost location. So may it be for new factory, warehouse, 
or it can be an office or any other outlet facility. And lastly, it can be applied to finding minimum cost production schedule. Now in here, we need to find the minimum cost production schedule that satisfies firm's demand and production limitation. And aside from applications of transportation models, we also have some characteristics of transportation model. And the first characteristic is, a product is to be transported from a number of sources to a number of destinations at the minimum possible cost. Now this means that the cost of distributing units from any particular source to any particular destination is directly proportional to the number of units being distributed. And this cost is just the unit cost of distribution times and the number of units distributed. Now second characteristic that we have is each source is able to supply a fixed number of units of the product and each destination has a fixed demand for the product. Now for the number two characteristic, this implies that each source has a fixed supply of units where this entire supply must be distributed to the destination. On the other hand, each destination has a fixed demand for units where this entire demand must be received from the source. And the third characteristic that we have that would be the linear programming model has constraints for supply at each source and demand at each destination. Now in here, the resources for which the structural constraints are built up is not homogeneous. When I say not homogeneous, it means that one constraint may relate to machine hours and next one may relate to man hours, etc. Okay, that's what I mean by not homogeneous. A number four characteristic that would be all constraints are equalities in a balanced transportation model where supply equals demand. Now for this characteristic, a transportation problem will have feasible solutions if and only if the sum of its supplies equals the sum of its demand. And lastly, constraints contain inequalities in unbalanced models where supply is not equal to demand. Now, there are two types of transportation problem that we need to have ourselves acquainted to. Now, first is we have balanced transportation problem, and second is unbalanced transportation problem. Now, as you can see, balanced transportation problem is where the total supply equals your total demand or total supply is equal to total demand as shown in the equation. And second type, we have unbalanced transportation problem. This will occur where the total supply is not equal to the total demanded or total demand. And lastly, um, I will be talking about the different approaches to solution to a transportation problem using transportation algorithm. Now, for this matter, we have two phases of solution of transportation problem. First, we have phase one, and phase one is about initial basic feasible solution. And for phase two, we have optimal basic solution. Now for phase one, uh, there are three different methods in establishing the initial basic feasible solution. And those are the following. We have Northwest Corner Rule. Second, we have Least Cost Method, or also known as Minimum Cost Method, or the Greedy Method. And lastly, we have Vogel's approximation method. And for the second phase, there are two methods 
that are used in establishing the optimal basic solution. First, we have stepping stone method. And second, we have modified distribution method. Now, in order for us to better understand these methods, uh, let us define first uh, the following. So under phase one or initial basic feasible solution, uh, we can make use of the method Northwest Corner Rule. Now, what is meant by this method then? Now, for this one, it is a procedure for obtaining an initial feasible solution to a transportation problem that starts with allocating units to the upper left-hand corner of any transportation problem. This is also considered to be as the most systematic and easiest method for obtaining the initial feasible basic solution. Now, in other words, this is a method adapted to compute the initial feasible solutions of the transportation problem. And what's interesting about it is that the name Northwest Corner is given to this method because the basic variables are selected from the extreme left corner. On the other hand, we have least cost method or also known as the greedy method. This is a systematized procedure used to find an initial feasible solution to a transportation problem. It is also considered to be as an easy to use and provides good but not original solution. Now in here, the allocation begins with the cell which has the minimum cost. Now the lower cost cells are chosen over the highest cost cell with the objective to have the least cost of transportation. And lastly, under phase one, we have Vogel's approximation method or VAM. It is an algorithm that finds an initial feasible solution to a transportation problem by considering the penalty cost of not using the cheapest available rate. Now, like least cost methods in VAM, the shipping cost is also taken into consideration, but in a relative sense. And lastly, we have phase number two, or what we call as the optimum basic solution. Now in phase number two, there are only two methods in establishing the optimum basic solution, and those are the stepping stone and the modified distribution method, or the MODI. Now, when we say stepping stone method, it is a procedure for determining if a solution to transportation problem is optimal that involves tracing paths from each unused square through stone squares. Now, that being said, SSM or stepping stone method is a procedure for finding the potential of any non-basic variables in terms of the objective function. And on the other hand, when we say modified distribution method or MODI, it is a procedure for determining per unit cost change associated with assigning flow to an unused square in the transportation problem. It is also an efficient method of checking the optimality of the initial feasible solution. All right, I think that's a good place to stop. On our next video, I will be presenting practical examples applying the methods used in establishing the initial basic feasible solution, as well as the methods used in establishing the optimal basic solution. Now, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for our latest updates. Thank you.